what worked 50, 60 years ago, uh, you know, for our parents and grandparents where all they had to do was come back from the war and have a factory job and a nice four-door sedan uh, and a decent house with a picket fence and a backyard with two kids and a swing set. Uh, that's not enough anymore. Got a crazy video for you today. She's not yours, it's just your turn. A woman should be a compliment to your life, not the focus. Do the work. Women do not care about your struggles. They hang out at the finish line and they pick the winners. What is up, my brothers from another mother? In this video, I'm going to be covering somebody that uh, took steps towards a permanent solution to a temporary problem. A gentleman sent me a requested video and he lost a family member to one-itis not too long ago. I'm going to be uh, careful about the language that I use when reading his uh, request and um, the information therein. But there's also five tips that I want to give to you guys as well that I think will be useful to anybody that might be dealing with one-itis, has dealt with one-itis in the past, and also family members that might be noticing uh, potential problems for somebody that they truly care and love. So let me get right into this over here. Um, he says, Richard, thanks for your great work. In short, my cousin, uh, I'm just going to change some language here, decided to take permanent steps to a temporary problem he had in his life after a breakup. Uh, he was not a person who was outwardly unstable uh, prior to this. Uh, to the outside observer, the only issue he was suffering was a long-term case of one-itis with his on-again, off-again girlfriend, who was also the mother of his child. Uh, I'm going to take you guys over to Iron Rule of Tomasi number seven which states it is always time and effort better spent developing new, fresh, prospective women than it will ever be in attempting to reconstruct a failed relationship. Never root through the trash once the garbage has been dragged to the curb. You get messy, your neighbors see you do it, and what you thought was worth digging for is never as valuable as you thought it was. Now, I've coached a lot of guys that have had really bad cases of one-itis. Like, you know, it's almost like I always think this is the worst I've ever seen and then something even worse comes along th after that. And it can take months to uh, give them the clarity that they need to let go of the soulmate myth and update their beliefs so they can make better choices and get better results out there with women and have a better experience overall. It's not that easy for most guys because we've been fed a steady diet of bullcrap our entire lives that have, you know, through, through our childhood with Disney movies where... You know, you think that if you do the right thing and, you know, you make some relationship investments or you put some equity into it, uh, she'll forever and ever, you know, love you till kingdom come and never leave you. But as many of us that have uh, endured a case of one itis have found out for ourselves, it's very difficult. So he says, I'm donating to the channel in hopes you could do a video uh, specifically deals uh, with male, with men's choices to take uh, permanent steps to temporary problems during breakups. I feel as men, we don't discuss this topic, and even when it stares us all in the face, uh, such as when Anthony Bourdain uh, did something similar last year, I think it was two years ago, actually now, uh, we attribute the, sorry, we attribute these unnecessary choices to depression when they appear to be more directly associated with the end of a toxic relationship in an otherwise successful life. Although the message, um, you know, don't do this seems obvious, I think that as friends, brothers, family members, and business partners to other men in our lives, we all need to recognize the danger that some men might be taking uh, in their lives, struggling with things like divorce or breakup. So I feel a video on the topic would throw a lifeline to some guys who need to hear this message and remind the rest of us to be looking out for our brothers when they're in this kind of trouble. I know it's a tough topic, topic perhaps a loaded one. If you could take it on, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, please accept my donation as support for the help you're offering men everywhere. Uh, keep my name anonymous. Got you covered, bro. So uh, I've... I'm probably uh, the poster child for one-itis, if I'm being honest. I remember the first time that I experienced it was um, in my early 20s. I think it was second long-term relationship I had. Um, I'd gone away for a month to visit family in Europe and went to Greece, and I came back, and I found out that she was uh, porking some guy from her baseball team. And um, that really messed me up big time. Um, it was probably about at least a month that I suffered. And suffering is a choice, by the way. But I decided to suffer. And I suffered for about a month. I didn't eat that much. Lost a lot of weight. Probably lost about 15 pounds. Wasn't sleeping at night. Um, it was a pretty bad scene. Uh, in hindsight, looking back at it, it's, it's laughable. I mean, at the time, I thought that it was necessary for me to struggle and feel the pain and, you know, cry like a little baby and all that sort of stuff. And I don't know, maybe, maybe I needed to do that. Maybe I didn't, but that was a path that I chose at the time. I didn't, I didn't 
have any uh, you know permanent thoughts in my head to the temporary problem that I had. Um, but I had a lot of support from my family over the phone and I had, uh, two roommates. One of them was my best friend at the time. Um, you know, who's, it was definitely useful, um, to me. So I know exactly what it's like. And I know that some guys, um, really, really struggle with this. I know it's tough. So let's hop into the five tips that I've set aside here in my notes over here. So tip number one is, uh, don't forego hobbies and brotherhoods. Um, I'm going to mention entrepreneurs organization because it's a group that I got involved in a forum around 2010 or so I think and I stayed with it for about four years and it was very very useful and the origin of it was I think back about 20 or 30 years when EO was formed the founding members were out having dinner I think it was like a year-end celebratory sort of thing with um, you know loved ones partners girlfriends whatever um, you know let's all drink and be merry and they went home everybody had a good time uh, and then they found out the next morning that one of the guys had decided to take permanent steps to a temporary problem he had in his life uh, and was no longer with them. And nobody knew that he had a problem. There was, there was no indication whatsoever. And in some cases, there isn't. The going back and forth to a bad relationship is a strong indicator that you've got somebody that's making bad choices in a relationship. And these other tips will help with that as well. But looking for that as somebody on the outside as a friend would, would be very, very useful uh, to them. After that happened, what they decided to do with EO as a group is they set up these private forums, which was an opportunity for um, these business owners to get together and uh, have conversations privately under a constitution um, with, uh, you know, specific terms about what would be discussed uh, there and kept there privately. Um, so it was a good opportunity for men and women that were business owners to get together with other like-minded people and basically deal with business problems or anything that was personal in their life. And they've never seen any, any sort of problem after that since. So I think it's important to find yourself some sort of brotherhood or a forum type of environment where you can get out with like-minded men. I don't care if it's a tribe. I don't care if, it, you know, if you've got like a group of guys that you fish or you hunt with, or you go to the bowling alley or you hit the gym with, whatever it is, the dojo, you know, dojos are great. I love them um, tons when they're open. I mean, you know, we're in quarantine right now, but um Find, find a place where you can form a bond with other men and do things with other men that are meaningful or useful, that, that build uh, competency skills, friendships, stuff like that. Uh, more often than not, guys are more than happy to let go of their hobbies or their friendships or brotherhoods uh, to placate or serve the narrative of uh, somebody that they have one-itis for. And it's, it's very, very bad. It's, it's, it's a, it's a real bad way to go. So make sure that, I mean, if you're a guy that's, you know, you got a brother or a cousin or a friend or something like that, and you see them making steps like that, it's important to say something. Uh, if you're a woman, understand that men need hobbies, men need a brotherhood, men need to, men need to do things with other men. And if they don't have a place where they feel like they've got a brotherhood, uh, other guys that give a damn about them where they can do things that are meaningful and learn skills and just joke around and shoot the shit. It's tough for guys. So tip number one is don't forgo hobbies and brotherhood. Uh, tip number two, don't have an unhealthy attachment to the one or a soul or, or subscribe to a soulmate myth. And here's a sign. Here's, here's three signs that you might actually be that dude. Uh, if you're on the outside and you hear somebody say this, this is an indicator that they've got an unhealthy attachment to one person. She's my soulmate. She's the one. She completes me. You've heard she completes me. I think it was Jerry Maguire. So a lot of these you've heard in Disney narratives and what Hollywood preaches and all that. And it's very sweet and loving and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, hokey pokey and let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya. But the reality of the world is very different from that narrative. So if you ever catch yourself thinking to yourself, she's my soulmate, she's the one, she's, you know, she completes me, things like that, then you're starting to show signs of an unhealthy attachment to one person, which is not realistic. And I'll explain why in the other tips following this, but look for yourself doing that, catch yourself doing it. And if you're a friend of somebody that is doing that, you've got an obligation to say and, and do something. They're not necessarily going to follow. They may not want to hear about it. But at least, you know, if something doesn't work out later on down the road, at least you can sleep at night knowing that you did the best you could to try to help them. Uh, tip number three, don't rely on a partner for security, comfort, and physical contact. 
Uh, there's this attachment theory that psychologists will often use. You'll find it in uh, APA or psychology to get, you know, today uh, articles and stuff like that. And they often, um, you know, compare it to a boy's attachment to his mother sort of thing. You shouldn't ever put yourself in a position where you're relying on your partner, you know, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever that might be for security, comfort, and physical contact and, and intimacy. Which brings me to tip number four, understand that nothing is permanent in this world. Uh, there's a sound bite that goes around a lot in the space that I operate in, you know, which is something along the lines of, you know, she's not yours, it's just your turn. And I think that if you understand that absolutely nothing is permanent in the world, the only thing that you're guaranteed, my friends, is taxes and your end. And that is it. Um, we all have an expiry date. Don't know when it is. It's going to come at some point. But if you live every day like your expiry date is tomorrow, you're probably going to have a pretty good experience in life itself. So just understand that nothing, including a woman that might come into your life, is permanent. Just because she is exchanging, uh, you know, time for love and intimacy. Like basically, you know, men are considered success objects and women are considered beauty objects. And there's an exchange there and usually it works out. It doesn't often work out for a lifetime though. Uh, humans aren't particularly monogamous. In fact, we're very promiscuous. Uh, in the Amazon bookstore that I've linked in, in the top pin comment, uh, there's lots of great books in there. I'd recommend you take a look at some of them. Some of them will reveal a lot of the truths that a lot of guys choose to ignore. They're, they're just the reality of the world that we live in today. So you have to understand that absolutely nothing that comes in your life is going to permanently always be in your life. Uh, you know, with the exception of perhaps, you know, kids or family, uh, you know, brothers and sisters and, and stuff like that. And even then there's always, you know, squabbles between siblings, um, you know, squabbles between parents and their kids. It happens. So um, there are a lot of relationships that I've seen where, you know, daughter won't speak to her father and, you know, there's problems that come out of that later on down the road or uh, siblings don't talk to each other because of what happened, you know, something one summer at the cottage or whatever. Just understand that everything's fluid and you do not want to rely on a belief or a theory that you manufacture in your head, you know, a, a covert contract, if you will, uh, that you subscribe to that uh, just because you made investments into a relationship that is permanent and going to last forever. Uh, before I go to tip number five, um, one of the big problems that a lot of guys make is they'll think to themselves, well, because I bought that house in this neighborhood and moved closer to her family and renovated the kitchen the way that she wanted and put in the shelving that she wanted in the walk-in closet, they've got all of this equity into the relationship and it just doesn't work that way. Um, there's a video that I did on Berfault's Law, which I'm going to link on the top right in a card. So click that and open it later. Watch it after this video so you have a little more understanding about how uh, Berfault's Law uh, clarifies this uh, concept itself. Uh, tip number five, chase excellence and understand that everybody is replaceable in relationships any kind of relationship. I bet you Steve Jobs thought that he was never replaceable, yet today Tim Cook runs Apple. There was a time where Steve Jobs was kicked out of his own company, formed another company, and they pulled him back, you know, sort of thing. Um, so it's not just in uh, intimate relationships, for example, marriages. I mean, 50% of marriages fail. Um, you know, most people today, anyway, have um, several partners. <laughs> uh, not just one or two. It's not like, you know, a couple hundred years ago where you might end up with just one um, intimate partner in your life and that was, you know, that was it. Uh, we live in a world today where uh, it's it's highly unlikely that you're going to be with the same person that you're with today. Um, so it's important that you invest time in yourself, make yourself your own mental point of origin and chase excellence. Uh, now, chasing excellence is pays off twice. It's ROI is the biggest thing for men. And I always say, guys, chase excellence, not women. And the reason for that is not only is, are you more attractive as a man that is on his purpose chasing excellence, hypergamy forces women to want to be with the best man that she can get. It's it's forcing her to ask, is this, is this the best deal that I can do? And if you're constantly on your game, you're not relaxing, getting lazy, uh, you know, sitting around, getting fat, doing nothing sort of thing, 
you're you're always going to be on some kind of purpose and that's attractive to women it's attractive to the world now if she decides that you're not for her anymore and let's say she bounces on you well you've been on a purpose and you've been chasing excellence you haven't been lazy so it would be very very easy for you to attract somebody new in your life if that's what you wanted to do or several women you know in your life if that's what you wanted to do after the fact um, but you'll have more of an abundance mindset because you'll be on a purpose. What worked 50, 60 years ago, uh, you know, for our parents and grandparents where all they had to do was come back from the war and have a factory job and a nice four door sedan, uh, and a decent house with a picket fence and a backyard with two kids and a swing set. Uh, that's not enough anymore. Um, that, that doesn't hold enough weight as it did, you know, back in the fifties when everybody was coming back from world war II. All you needed was that factory job, you know, something secure and, you know, she'd be home, leave it to Beaver style. And, you know, you'd come home to a nice cooked meal sort of thing that doesn't exist today. So for men today, they've got to do a lot more. Um, and arguably they get a lot less back in return. That's something else for another video. But, um, I think it's important that if you're going to engage with, um, you know, women on a sexual marketplace and most of you guys are, and there's absolutely nothing wrong. It's totally healthy. Um, there's, there's certain things that you can do to plot out, um, the minefield, which is what I really talk about. It's like, I'll plot out all the danger points and you guys can decide what you want to do with it. If you want to walk it or not, or, you know, set off on the side, doesn't matter to me, but it's important that you prioritize chasing excellence and just understand that everybody is replaceable. And ideally you definitely want to have yourself in a position where you're in a relationship where there's some competition anxiety with her. She understands that she can't get lazy or, or think that she's not replaceable. And those are all things that, you know, you, you can learn to do from a lot of the books that I recommend. They're sitting off, you know, my shelf over here in the Amazon bookstore below. Uh, I got low, I got hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel. So, uh, this particular video will be in the red pill playlist. So if you've got a few hours uh, that you want to set aside, you want to get your head around, uh, how women respond to attraction and arousal and all this sort of stuff. So you don't end, end up in a position where you might be thinking about taking permanent steps to a temporary problem in your life. That would be a good idea. So, um, I'm not going to mention names, but thank you for uh, sponsoring the video and give me an opportunity to talk about this. I hope this helps you, or it helps at least somebody that might need to see it. It's incredibly important to try to have these conversations, even though they're difficult to have with platforms like this, uh, give this a like and leave a comment below. If there's some feedback that you've got or somebody that needs to see this video, show it to them. Also, if you're a guy that's seeking other men that are in a like-minded state that are doing work on themselves, chasing excellence, I do have a men's community, uh, put a card up on the top, right. And also following that card, I'll put another one up for how to request a video. All that stuff is of course, pinned in the top comment. Thanks for watching today's video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.